Welcome to another video. Let's play with these numbers. In the previous video, I showed you that one half factorial is the square root of pi over two. So now we have a quick class exercise. What would negative one half factorial divided by one half factorial be? Well, you can factor out the one because yeah, this is factorial now, so we can factor in a factorial. <laughs> you can actually, but not in this case. So what would the answer be? Well, as you saw in the thumbnail, the answer is 2. And why is that so? Well, since you already know what this is, we can say that this is equal to, this is the square root of pi over 2. And on top of this is the square root of pi. So when you divide the square root of pi, by the square root of pi over 2, your answer is going to be 2. So the only question you have is, how do you know that this is the square root of pi? Well, I can show you in the illegal way first, and then the legal way. The illegal way works. I don't know why it works, but it just works. Maybe what's going to be is going to be. Let's get into the video. So I'm going to show you the illegal way first. Why am I saying it's illegal? Because you guys are putting pressure on me to say it is illegal, but it works. We know that x factorial is equal to x times x minus 1 times x minus 2 factorial. You just keep going factorial. I know it's not defined that way unless when this is a natural number, right? Let's go unnatural now. <laughs> Someone said that mathematicians have unnatural desires. That's the wrong way to use that expression. Okay, don't ever say that. I do not have unnatural desires. Okay, so let our x be one half. So I know that one half factorial will be equal to one half times one half minus one factorial. But I know that one half factorial from the previous video using the gamma function or the pi function was square root of 2. Square root of pi divided by 2 will be equal to 1 half of negative 1 half factorial. You see? This is half of this. This must be pi over square root of pi. It's just as plain as day, because if I multiply both sides by 2, I can clearly say that negative 1 half factorial is equal to square root of pi. And that's it. Oh, that's a bad line. Okay, so you say that's illegal. Show us the real way. Well, I have to use the gamma function or the shifted gamma function, which I call the pi function, which I think I prefer to use in this case because it's direct. Let's do it. So recall the definition. We know that the pi function is defined as pi of x is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the x times e to the negative t dt. So we have negative one half factorial will be equal to a pi of negative one half, which is this integral from zero to infinity of t to the negative one half e to the negative t dt. So we'll have to do some u substitution because um, there is no direct way to integrate this, even integration by parts, this is not going to get easier. It's not going to become smaller. It won't go to zero because of this, so we might want to make this uh, a power. Okay, let's see. So the way this is, I can say with u substitution, I can say um, in order to, because of this half power, we can say let u squared be equal to t. That's the best substitution. Although any other substitution would work, but you want to use this one. 
we u squared equals t, it means if we differentiate both, we're going to have, differentiate this, you have 2u, 2u du equals dt. What else do we have? Well, that's all we need. We just need to go plug in t wherever we see t here. Let's simplify this. You see t to the negative one half is the same thing as one over square root of t because see this integral of zero to infinity of this can be written as one over the square root of t e to the negative t dt. Well, it becomes, oh, we need to find the boundaries. Well, look at the boundaries. We want to see what u is going to be. If u squared equals t, then u squared equals 0. That means u equals 0. So it doesn't change. The boundary has not changed. And when u squared is infinity, it means u is infinity because there's no number that you can square to get infinity except infinity. So the boundaries remain the same. Okay, that's safe. So what we have now is the integral from 0 to infinity of, let's see, this is going to be 1 over square root of t, but t is u squared. So it's 1 over the square root of u squared multiplied by e to the negative t. What is t? u squared, negative u squared, times dt. What's dt? 2u du. Oh, we're going to write 2u du. Nice. Okay, let's see if we can clean this up. This 2 can come all the way to the back. 1 over square root of u becomes 1 over absolute value of u, but we can remove the absolute value because our values are from 0 to infinity, so it's not going to be negative. Okay, now, so, um, so this is going to be 1 over u times u. Oh, so this, let's write it one more time. This is going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of, there's going to be 2, and there's going to be u, and there's going to be 1 over u, and there's going to be e to the negative u squared du. Okay, so this is what we have, and this cancels this, there's going to be a 2. So ultimately, what we have is just, so we know that negative 1 half factorial is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of there's going to be a 2 outside and e to the negative u squared. Do you? That's all. So I'm going to put the 2 here and write e to the negative u squared du. This is equal to 2 times, remember this is the Gaussian integral, the half Gaussian integral because it's now from negative infinity, which is the same thing. That's how we got this, right? It's just 2 times the square root of pi over 2. So you can confidently say, using the gamma function or the pi function, whatever you want to call it, you know that negative 1 over 2 factorial is equal to, come on, the square root of pi, right there. And it even shows up here. Okay. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.